Here we go. I'm good right here. It's not this type of show. show everybody we look I've said this a lot over the winter because this is the 878th day of winter it's hard getting an audience uh, every day when you're based in Minneapolis we have a giant house today a full Woo! house yeah. we have a very in the house a very special uh, school that is celebrating the Wizard of Oz's 80th anniversary and here somewhere in the building is a replica of the actual ruby slipper. So we're gonna be seeing that coming up in just a little bit. Right now though, audience, save a lot of that love for my good friend. Give it up for Kindle, everybody. Hi. Hello, Hi. Kindle. Hi. Hi, sweetie. What's going good on? Good morning. Good okay. morning. Okay, let's give everyone a tease. No, we, we, I haven't seen you since yesterday afternoon. Mm. Uh, we mm. did some, no, I'm not kidding. We went on this shoot, everybody, to this place called, what was it, Kendall? Can, Candy Topia? Candy Topia. Candy Topia at Mall of America. And all we will say is this we ended the day in a pool of marshmallows, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. That, mm -hmm. uh, Bet you've never done that before. Yeah. That sounded a little perverted, but I didn't mean it like that. I just meant, you know. It just... And we held hands when we fell we into did. the marshmallows. It's yeah. beautiful. You will see that coming up. Uh, it was uh, tomorrow. It was our first experience shooting something together. And I looked at Kendall and I go, I'm very sorry. This was your first experience uh, with me. <laughs> hey, great. Uh, speaking of our crew, before we uh, go any farther, I want to say, uh, you know, we have a couple crew members that have been with us since the very beginning when the show debuted about four years ago. And one of them is our photographer, Eric. Uh, Eric was, I believe, the very first hire. You see him in, in stories. More importantly, you know, the behind the scenes folks never get the credit they deserve. All of the stories that you see here on our show are beautifully shot by one person. Like he does it all. Yesterday, uh, and he's become over the years, not just a photographer for our show, but a dear, dear friend of mine. And sincerely, one of the sweetest guys I've met uh, in television in 20 years. I just want to say yesterday was his anniversary. So I just want to say happy anniversary to Eric and his wife, Tanya. Yes. So he's a good guy. So happy anniversary. Yeah, if you ever, if you ever see him, he pops up in stories. He dresses up like uh, squirrels and things. He's a, good, he's a good egg. So happy anniversary. Before we get started uh, with the hot dish, I got to tell you, I have a goal that I think, I think the youngins in the audience will appreciate. I, I have a new life goal because here's mm -hmm. the deal, Kendall. I, look, I'm a very blessed guy. Uh, everything career-wise that I've wanted to do, I've been able to do. Every dream that I had, I've, I've accomplished. Like I always say, the rest of this is gravy. I will be sitting in, in the retirement village eating, eating, my, eating my pie, and I will have no regrets. You know, I'll just be happy. Mm -hmm. So I have to create new little dreams. I have a new dream that I'm going to do on this show before. Now, don't laugh, Aaron Schwab, because you know what this dream is. I love Nicki Minaj's Super Bass. That, I love oh. that song, okay? Thank you, I knew. I see where this is going. I knew, I knew that side of the audience would know. It's, this is, oh, is this the clean version, Jeff? Is this the clean version? Yeah. So this is the song, My Dream. I want to memorize the beginning of this and perform it here on the show before I yes. die. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I have been. Can I quote you on that? Because it's. Because it's a really fast, I mean, you know Nikki, yeah. she goes, I have been practicing and on the radio show this morning, I almost left my mic on where, when I was practicing in the commercial break. So mm -mm. I, 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 I'm practicing and I'm going to do it. Do you want me to print you off the lyrics? Yeah, please do. Because okay. Joseph Gordon-Levitt did it on Fallon many years ago. Google that. It's one of the best late night clips ever. And I want to do it. So soon, 
It's my new life goal. That's what I'm, and I'm going to make it happen. I swear. I, yeah. I, I like this. Thank you. I really you. like this. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go. <laughs> First up, the interview a lot of people are still talking about this week. Yesterday, you really couldn't even turn on a website. I'm talking about CBS This Morning's Gail King interviewing R. Kelly about the sexual abuse charges against him. Now, yeah, seriously, that, that picture, that iconic picture, well, I think it will be iconic, of Gail sitting there calmly with R. Kelly above her, will be, it was everywhere. More of the interview played this morning but here, like I said, here is the moment that's getting a lot of attention. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave y'all 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Y'all trying to kill me. You're killing me, man. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it. Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. Here's the, uh, there's a couple updates. First, Kelly is back in jail today. You guys didn't hear, telling a judge that he couldn't pay child support. Gail King is earning universal mm -hmm. praise. You, I don't care. You could turn on, uh, the, you could read the Washington Post. You could read the New York Times. You could read whatever. You could read a, a Motor Trend. They're all talking fish, field and motor stream. Trend. Yeah. Everybody is praising Gail for her grace under pressure. She revealed, listen to this. Yeah, she really did. Yeah. She revealed, she talked about, you know, her kids and her BFF Oprah called her to check on her after the interview. Now, all of this comes as Gail, now this is the reason we're doing this story, is because this, this is perfect timing, y'all. Gail, you may not know, is right now as we speak renegotiating her contract with CBS to stay on the morning show. And according to page six, Gail wants the same type of money that George Snuffleupagus gets in his new contract. And that's between. What? What did you just call him? I, George Snuffleupagus. I can't. I did Stephanopoulos. But anyway, yeah, because George gets about between 15 and 18 million dollars a year. Gail currently gets six million a year. Mm. I knew the audio, I knew you would, yeah. Here's the deal, this could not come at a better time for Gail. And this is why I love it. A lot of people don't know that, you know, Gail, this isn't new for Gail. People thought, oh, she's just Oprah's best friend. No, if you know anything about her, when Oprah was doing the Oprah Winfrey show, Gail was a hugely successful television journalist in Connecticut. She anchored the news for as long as Oprah had her show. That's how they right. met. Right. They, they were at the t same TV station, and there was a snowstorm when they were young, and Gail didn't want to drive home, so Oprah let her stay, and they've talked every day since. But people think that she, yeah, but people just think, oh, it's, oh Gail's just Oprah's best friend. No. Mm -mm. This is what I love about the story. This is proving that Gail really is. They, they're referring to her now as the heart of CBS News, and they, okay. need, they need to keep her. They need to keep Gail. I love Gail. Yeah. I know that we have this mutual infatuation with Oprah. We do. And the fact that they went camping, like glamping, that, Gail and Oprah, the, we need to do that. The Gail, we should go camping because camping scares the crap out of me. But I still, yeah, love yeah. it. I love I, camping. I think, can you imagine me putting up a tent? Because I And I know I'm going to be eaten by a bear if I go. I know that's going to happen. Remind me to tell you about the wolf story later last time I went camping. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We're going though. We're going. No, Jeff and I no, are no, talking no, 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 no. about it you right can't, now. No, 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 no. You can't talk about camping and then just say, "Remind me to tell you about the wolf story." I'm not going camping with you. It was. It's just a pack. Just a pack. Let's move we on. should move on. I'm not yeah, going camping with you after a wolf. Going camping. Next, he's been. Uh, you know, this was sad. He's uh, a daily part of a lot of your lives. Now, Alex Trebek is asking for a lot of love and support after a really shocking announcement. The Jeopardy host revealed he was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer just this week. Now, Alex posted a really, a really direct message. I loved how he handled this on the Jeopardy YouTube page, saying he wanted to share the news himself. He says he plans, and this is great, we're gonna roll this. I love that Alex, how, how he did this. He's so classy, he, he did it in the most humorous way, like an upbeat way, look at this. I plan to beat the low survival rate statistics for this disease. Truth told, I have to, because under the terms of my contract, I have to host Jeopardy for three more years. 
So help me, keep the faith, and we'll win. We'll get it done. Thank you. Yeah. There's nobody. Nobody. Nobody better. Trebek mm-hmm. is getting, as you can imagine, support from millions of people, including late night host Stephen Colbert. Uh, gave him a really sweet tribute. Listen to this. So I just want to say from all of us here, um, the clue is stay strong, Alex. And the answer in the form of a question is what does everyone watching want you to do? Mm. We love you, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always use the wa- I always use the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, they're going to build uh, the Mount Rushmore of television comedians. They're going to put Lucy on there. You're going to put Carol Burnett. When they write the book in TV game shows, Alex Trebek is on the Mount Rushmore of television game show hosts. I mean, he's amazing. Oh, your mic's not on for whatever reason. Poor Kendall. There, see? Oh, now have it's you, on. Have you muted they me? They sabotaged you on day two. <laughs> you muted me? Yeah. I guess Evan. I Evan, <laughs> floor director, Evan, no. Evan. What, do you, <laughs> what, do you, what, what were you going to say? I don't remember. I got muted. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? It's all right. Now. Just write it down. We'll put it on Facebook later. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. Uh, grab a cup of coffee. Meet me back here in just a few minutes. Back after that. Coming up in just a bit, my friends, it's been a while since we've seen Taylor Swift out and about. Well, there was a rare sighting in the wild, and Dax Holt caught it on camera. Dax is live just ahead. Plus, she pulls no punches, and that's why we love her. Our etiquette expert, Julie, from the St. Paul Hotel is back, and today she's tackling the kiddos, a starter course on teaching manners to your kids. And speaking of kids, a middle school is celebrating the 80th anniversary of The Wizard of Oz with unbelievable costumes and a replica of the real ruby slippers. That pair is here, and you'll see them when The Jason Show continues. It's the first day of Lent. But did that stop people from lying directly to Jesus' face? Well, let's find out in an Ash Wednesday edition of Lie Witness News. Over the past 40 days, everyone gave up something for Lent. What did you give up? Slushies. Like ices. Yeah. Was it hard? Yeah, it's very hard. I love them. They're like an addiction for me. (laughs) But today's the last day, so you get to drink them again. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited. For the last 40 days, uh, I gave up donuts, which is probably one of the hardest things a human can do and had my first one again this morning, and life-changing. So next year, I'll pick something easier. Like lying. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, lie witness news. Proving once again that uh, Kimmel proving people will lie about anything, including what they gave up for Lent, which by the way, just started yesterday. Just FYI, yes, right? What are they thinking? More hot dish for you today, and for that, we head to Hollywood for our insider to the stars. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dax Holt, everybody. Hi, Dax. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, audience. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How about you? Doing well. First up, a rare spotting. It's like a unicorn. She used to be everywhere, <laughs> and now she, she hides. With Taylor Swift and her boyfriend, what were they doing, Dax? Yeah, I got our hands on some exclusive photos of Taylor and her boyfriend, Joe. They were, you know, like you said, you don't get them out that often. So to get them hiking through the Santa Monica Mountains is definitely a rare spotting. Uh, But they were holding hands, looking very lovey-dovey. They were, you know, kind of just, they were on the trail, then they were cutting through the trail. I mean, they, but for us, over at Hollywood Pipeline, this is a big get for us because, you know, Taylor is can be a very private person, but, you know, when she goes out, uh, obviously a lot of people look, and we just happen to catch her out on a nice little romantic hike. Dude is, uh, the guy is an actor, right, Dax? Do we know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he, uh, you know, she spent, you know, that's actually why she uh, passed on going to the Grammys, because she was in London supporting him at the BAFTAs, because his movie was up for a bunch of awards. So wow. uh, I think that's a good sign that they are very uh, compatible for each other if she's willing to miss the Grammys for him. After, absolutely, yeah, I would say so. Next up, Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie showing the love for her family. What'd she do? I love, I love Margot. 
This is the greatest story. So Margo in the past, we there, there's, there was a report a couple of years ago that she paid off her mom's mortgage, which was already very cool. We'll flash forward to uh, last summer, come to find out she actually bought two homes, one for her sister and one for her mother. And there it's like an adjoined duplex over in Australia in Byron Bay area. And uh, it's a, a gated uh, like house. It's beautiful. And she said, here, I want you guys to have this. I mean, and Margot is one of the most in-demand actresses right now, making movie after movie after movie, getting award after award. So clearly the money is rolling in and she is passing it over to uh, her family members, which I love. You know, we, this uh, no one found out about the homes until this week, but uh, nevertheless, a very cool story. I like that because that's what you want to do. The minute you make it big, you get that first big check. You want to buy your mama a house or something. Aww. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and because Dax, I'm buying this whole audience a car. So yeah. later today. <laughs> We're holding to that audience. Yeah. They can buy you that car. And exactly. you know what? I'm kind of audience right now, so I want a car too. Jason. Done. Yeah. Even though some people in this audience to my right can't drive, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finally, Jared Leto. <laughs> Jared Leto hits up the fanciest restaurant in London, but there was a little a little problem, right, Dax? Well, not for him, but uh, I think for the other members uh, in the restaurant. So he goes to the Chiltern Firehouse, which is a huge restaurant over there. It's, uh, it's kind of like the celeb hot spot in London, kind of like Craig's is in L.A. And he comes strolling in, looking like he just rolled out of bed. And if you look down at his feet, oh! he's wearing his slippers. Like literally bathrobe slippers. He is walking into this super, super fancy restaurant. He does go there quite a bit. So I'm guessing that for him, it probably isn't a fancy restaurant anymore. It's just a restaurant. But come on, that's tech. We have, but I, the thing, even if there's a dress code there, what are you going to say? No, Jared Leto, you can't come in. Of course they're going to let him in. I would be like, go back and get some shoes on and then you can come back. That's, yeah, anyway. Are you really going to say that to Jared Leto? Yeah, I guess you're right. You're going to be like, come are on you, in, sir. Pick at whatever table you want. Are you wearing shoes, by the way? Do you have shoes on right now? I have no pants on, so no, I don't have shoes on. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap. Dax Hold, everybody, from Hollywood Pipeline. <laughs> Gotta go, Dax. Uh, you can follow Hollywood Pipeline on social media. You can follow Dax as well to search for Dax Holt. By the way, I am actually wearing pants. Right, ma'am? Right, ma'am? I'm wearing pants. My goodness. She would never come back to the show if that wasn't the case. That's right. Still to come, answering your etiquette questions from tipping grocery delivery drivers to weddings, an etiquette expert weighs in. But first, we've loved him since he was Zach on Saved by the Bell. We are chatting live with Mark Paul Gosseler about his new vampire thriller, The Passage. Mark is next. Stay with us. <laughs> audience today. Our next guest has been entertaining us for all of the past, I can't believe it, 30 years. Mark Paul Gosler now stars in the Fox hit The Passage, based on the best-selling books as a federal agent protecting a young girl who could be the key to survival of the human race. The season finale airs next week on Fox. It is a hit. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mark Paul. Good morning, Mark Paul. Hey, Jason. Good morning. What is it you know, you've done a lot. You've done d different series, different genres. What is it at this point in your career, Mark, that you look for in a script that makes you want to do it? Well, you know, the, the pedigree behind this is what drew me in. Uh, being a fan of the books written by Justin Cronin, uh, Liz Heldens was the creator of our show. And then we have the producers, Matt Reeves and Ridley Scott. So that all combined, I, I knew that we had the potential for a winning formula. Now, I talked a little bit about, about the plot, the uh, generalities. For people that are catching up right now or want to catch up on demand, tell us, how do you fit into this universe? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big universe. It's an epic tale. If you haven't caught it, you can watch it on Fox Now or Hulu. Uh, and like you said, we have our two-hour season finale. 
on Monday, but uh, I fit in, uh, you know, there's a central story between a a man and a a little girl. Um, This little girl was supposed to be a government experiment, uh, but it goes horribly wrong. And and they had good intentions. They were supposed to cure infectious diseases. Instead, they created these horrible monsters that is basically going to take down humanity. She might become the savior. um, And I fall into that story in, in many different ways. I, I, like I said at the very beginning, you've done different types of roles, different genres in television. Do you pay attention because this has been a hit for Fox? Do you pay attention to like? Do you pay attention to the ratings, or do you try not to let that <laughs> interfere with you? No, 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 no. This is a business, and uh, you know I, I, I want to succeed, and I want people to uh, to enjoy what we're doing. And and, and and unfortunately, you know we we're sort of a slave to these numbers. Uh, it, it, it's sort of a barometer to let us know if, if we're popular or not. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm always looking at the numbers the next day and, and uh, making sure that uh, they're positive and they have been. They've been very, very strong and I've appreciated all the support we've gotten from uh, our viewers. I was going to say, I, I looked at social media and every time an episode airs, it must feel good. You guys do have a very devoted following. Yeah, we have a very devoted following. We also have a cast that's very devoted in, in um, you know, publicizing the show. We're all very proud of it. Uh, we appreciate all the fans and want to engage with everybody. So throughout all our platforms on, on uh, social media, the, the, the cast and crew and directors and everyone involved has been very um, uh, involved with getting, you know, people involved. So it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a big, uh, big family that wants us to succeed. We have about 30 seconds I, at the very beginning introing you. You and I are exactly the same age. Uh, was, is it weird to hear? <laughs> is it weird to hear in the business for 30 years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I still feel like uh, you know, a fresh-faced, uh, fresh-faced kid who's trying to find a job. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I've been in the business for 30 years. It, it, it doesn't feel that way, and I'm still having a great time. Yeah, and you don't look any different. I don't know what skincare you're using, but you look exactly the same. So you are <laughs> aging well, my friend. Continued just, success. Thank you so much. Just moisturize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the two-part season finale of The Passage airs Monday night, next Monday, next Monday night on Fox. And like Mark said, you can also catch up on demand on Hulu and Fox Now. Still ahead, there's no place like Oz. There's no place like Oz. We've got a replica pair of Dorothy's Ruby Slippers here. You won't want to miss this tribute to the 1939 classic. Plus, the do's and don'ts at the dinner table. After the break, one of our favorite guests. She tells it like it is. Etiquette expert Julie France from the St. Paul Hotel is here to teach your kids some proper manners. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Teach those manners. It is never too early for your kids to learn some proper manners. So how about go, how do you go about teaching them to mind their P's and Q's at the dinner table? There's only one person we turn to for lessons in etiquette. I love this woman so very much. Give it up for the etiquette expert from the St. Paul Hotel, Julie France, everybody. Thank you. Hi, sweetie, welcome back. Thanks for I, having I me. I gotta tell you, you're one of those guests, and I really mean this, you're one of those guests when I see your name on the board, we have a Aww. board where we keep, I get excited because I, I, I find you to be a delight on our show. Well, so we thank have you fun much. together, we, don't we? We have a good time, that's right. <laughs> I oh. have to tell you, people were loving that whole thing about shut the door, and you're like, Julie, for the Valentine's Day, isn't that a little rude? Shut the door. Oh, I know, yeah. Julie told yeah. like if a date was going bad, she just shuts the door, <laughs> and I love that. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. Uh, this is kids and dinner, dinner table yeah, we manners. Have some kids we have here. some kids They're all very polite, though. I'm sure, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. We're going to go through things. Let's start with butter and rolls. Right. And let me just preface it by saying this. Manners are all based on kindness and respect. Yeah. And if you kids will just be kind and respectful, you'll go far in life. Yeah. You know? Um, so anyway, it's eating protocol that, again, will help you to have confidence. And so there is a correct way and a wrong way to eat butter and rolls. Okay. So if the rolls are in front of me, I would take them, and whatever you touch, you take. Don't feel for the biggest dig down to the bottom. <laughs> and then I would offer it to you. Thank you would you, take, I'll put take it on your one. bread and butter plate, okay, that's this which one right is here. above your forks, and then you would hold it to the next person, offer it to them. 
Then we would take butter, and again, we didn't have time to get our fancy schmancy, but anyway, so then we would take a small amount of butter, you put it to the side of the roll, don't put it right on the roll. Oh! Right. Okay, and I'm learning that, and I right learned all my side. table manners from that scene in Pretty Woman, so this is, yeah, probably yeah, there we not go. such a good idea. Thank you, audience. So, you, you, everyone knows what scene I'm talking about. Okay, so you put a little bit like right, that. Right, and then you would pass that on, okay. and the reason you don't put it directly on the roll is that that's a community knife, and then you could get breadcrumbs on the knife, and now it's going to go back into the community butter. Okay. And so all the rules are designed to, again, help you to eat efficiently. So the correct way now is that you will take the roll, you break off a bite-sized piece, then you take your butter, butter a bite, and then you eat a bite. You do not take the roll, do not cut it in half, do not hold it, slather butter all over, because then when you go to take a bite, you're going to get butter up your nose, on your cheeks, pretty soon it's dripping down the fingers, and you see people licking their fingers. And it, it's very simple. You don't have to make this big mess. It's break off a bite, butter a bite, and eat a bite. So that's how you eat butter and roll. Fine. I won't do that anymore. Okay, let's move to how to eat soup. Soup. Okay, well, so I have to pour you a little bit of soup because that's fake soup. Fake yeah. soup, but okay. that's okay. It will work. There is a correct way to do that. Also, there's a little saying I teach my students, and it sounds like this. As the ship goes out to sea, I dip the spoon away from me. And the rule is that you want to dip, catch drips from the back, so that you're not spilling all over the front of you. So you hold it like a spoon, yep, or like a pencil. It's okay. a spoon you hold like a pencil. I'm left-handed, though, so let me yep. do this. Yep, so you're going to do that. So, so then you're going to dip what's, what's in that, what's that as song? the what's ship. As, as the, the ship, ship goes out to sea, you're going to dip away. As the ship. That way, that way. Oh, as the, as ship the ship goes, goes out, out to sea, sea, I dip the I spoon dip. away from me. Okay, as the ship goes out to sea, I, I dip, dip the, the spoon, spoon away, away from, from me. me. And then lean forward slightly. Zip from the side. <laughs> as the ship goes out to sea, I dip the, the spoon, spoon away, away from, from me. me. Zip from the side. Don't take your mouth down to the bowl. But you lean forward Julie, slightly. Julie, now come on, yeah. Julie. People don't do that, do they, Julie? Yes, they do. And oh, some people goodness. even pick the bowl up and drink from it like that. <laughs> Cannot do that. If it. I've done that at the Olive Garden. I'm at sorry. The yeah, Olive I've done, Garden. Yeah, I've, I've done it at the, the Olive Garden. Yeah. Your home. No, no, no. And then if there's a little bit left, you dip it away from you. Just tip it away and then scoop out that last little bit, not towards you. The whole key again with soup is you don't want it to spill mm. on you. So you're doing everything away to catch the drip. <laughs> Name tags. Name tags. Name tags for kids. Yes, well, name tags for everybody. Yeah. Name tags go on the right, close to the shoulder. Wherever you put the name tag, you're inviting people to look. So when women put it in the middle of their chest, not such a good idea because you're inviting people to look, right? Or in the middle of their belly, but it goes to the upper right. And the reason for that is, Jason, when we shake hands, Hello. Then I have a straight line to go right up and refresh my memory. Jason, good to Hello. see you again, Jason. See, kids? That's yeah, right. Yeah. There's see. a reason for every little rule of etiquette. Okay, do's and don'ts for holding silverware. Yes. Um, there is what we call the American style and the continental style okay. of eating. And both are correct in America. The continental style was designed in 1840. And so we can use either style in America. Okay. The American style is you hold them in the palm of your hands using your fingers uh, to uh, apply pressure to cut. I would cut a bite. Then I would place the knife at the top. I exchange hands, drop this hand into my lap. Take a bite. Once again, lean forward slightly. Don't take your mouth to the plate. Don't lean back so far that it's a precarious move. But I lean forward slightly. This is called resting position. And so it's a constant shifting. So we call oh. it zigzag. Isn't the food cold by the time you well, eat it? Well, and that's, that's oh, why Lord. I'm going to show you another way that okay. is more efficient. Can, can, we, can we do yeah. it on the other side of this yes, commercial? Yes, yes, yes. More with Julie. Plus, uh, Julie has a few luncheons coming up geared toward children. Those are on April 14th and May 19th at the St. Paul Hotel. For more information, go to stpaulhotel.com. We're not done just yet after the break. She's answering some of your etiquette questions from Facebook. More with Julie when we come back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Or with Julie Franz, that a good expert at the St. Paul Hotel. So let's wrap up. Let's wrap up our silverware etiquette yes, lesson. Yes. 
Right. So the other style of eating we'll show you real quick is called the European or Continental. Works great if you're left-handed or right-handed. Yeah. Hold them in the palm of your hands. And with this style, you're going to cut a bite, you rest the knife, and bring the fork up inverted. Okay. We have silent service. This is called resting position. Silent service, it means I'm not done. Don't take my plate. And if you pretend your plate is a clock, 12, 6, 4, and 10, put them in what we call the finished position. That indicates to the server, I am finished. You may take my plate. Also for a hostess like me, I'm always watching when you come over for dinner. Are you finished? Are you still eating? And want to make sure that I pace myself with you. Now, if you uh, put the silverware in the wrong position and they go to grab your food, you can yell at them, can't you? Well, in a very nice I'm way. I'm just joking. Yeah. Yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> Please so don't Julie, take my plate. Yeah, we had, uh, we had our viewers on Facebook send in yeah. their own questions for Julie. So you okay. ready to go? I'm ready. Uh, we'll try to get us through as many of these as we can. Sure. Nancy, hello Nancy. She writes, I've been ordering groceries online. How much should I tip on top of fees and and delivery charges. Okay, TIP stands for to ensure promptness. And it started back when letters Shut were, up, really? Yes, and Ooh, it, it okay. started when letters were delivered by horse and buggy. So they would give them a little extra cash to make sure you delivered it promptly. So tips should be given out of the spontaneity, generosity of your heart. With that being said, some grocery delivery places will say don't tip, but honey, if someone's delivering groceries in Minnesota, 12 feet of snow, 20 below, Boy, you better have a 20 ready to give that <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Rachel. Rachel writes, we host meals involving others' children. When one child is, uh, when, when one, child is one, they all tend to walk away, done rather, yes. they all tend to walk away leaving uneaten food and the kids are hungry again in 30 minutes. Should I enforce the rule that you're not excused until everyone is done eating? Absolutely. Your home, your rules. And that's how I started teaching etiquette, was all these little kids around my table. And I said, welcome, you may eat my food, but it's my rules. Here's some of the rules. If you are done, uh, maybe have a little bit more or don't shovel that food in quite so fast and pick up the pace with conversation. But no, you're not, you're not allowed you're to You're not finish. contributing, yeah. Timmy, to the conversation. <laughs> That's, right. That's right, yeah. And we did. We would practice conversation. If you're done, the weight's on you now. Start talking. We're talking yeah. Mideast peace. What do you want to say? <laughs> Okay, so yeah. your house, your room. It's the first time Mideast Peace has ever been said on our show, <laughs> FYI. Rebecca writes, if I go to a friend's house for dinner and they serve something I don't like, what's a polite way to say it without hurting their feelings? Don't be fussy, just be grateful. Keep your little lips closed. If you can't be kind, be quiet. And again, did that person fix you something to try to kill you? No. Put a little bit on your plate. And this is a rule of etiquette. Yeah. If you, you know, try a little bit. And if it's like in your mouth and you're thinking, this ain't going to go down so well, take a sip of beverage, move it around your plate, hide it under the parsley, and keep moving, but don't you say a word. Okay. <laughs> what if they are trying to poison your food? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go to Lisa. What does, you love this question. What, this is a modern question. What does the bride do with her phone when she's getting married? Your phone is not one of your major organs that you cannot live without. <laughs> and it, isn't that the truth? I mean, we have people that they think it's just part of them. And if they're separated, they go into an anxiety attack. <laughs> Honey, Lisa, this is a day where if ever you want to be present, yeah. it is your wedding day. Yes. There will be video photographers, photographers, and about 200 people taking pictures. Put that Whoa. phone away and be present and yeah. enjoy every moment. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you, absolutely. <laughs> Marsh. Well, can I say this real quick? Say whatever you I want. Say this I real quick. Because I am so grateful. My son was married a month ago to the most beautiful daughter-in-law. Oh. Her name is Allie. Hi, and so Allie. I had to give my that speech to myself and I said, Julie, enjoy this day. She's got be all these present. people, be present. I put my phone away. So when people said, do you have any photos? I'm like, no, no. I was there. I enjoyed every yeah. beautiful Look moment. Look at you. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. by the way. Marsh writes in. Hi, Marsh. We stay with family members while on vacation. Should we offer money for utilities? Well, you know, that's, I, that's interesting because if you're sharing a unit, that's another story. But if they have invited you to come to their home, then here's the rule, folks. Mm -hmm. When people cross the threshold of my home, you are my guest. I will feed you. I will take care of you. I will entertain you. With that being said, a savvy guest will arrive with a hostess gift. Mm -hmm. chocolate, bottle of wine, whatever you think they will like. And if you're staying there for really more than three days, you should take them out to eat. Yeah. But otherwise, to offer to pay the utilities, I, I would, no, no way. No. This is, you are my guest, and it is my responsibility to feed you and take care yes. of you. But again, if, 
if I'm reading that right, it's not like a vacation no, place. No, no, no. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I ain't paying your Excel bill. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Give it up for Julian for everybody. For more information on Heretical Luncheons for kids, go to stpaulhotel.com, and we'll be, be put, we'll be putting both of these segments on our Facebook page a little bit later. Coming up, click your heels three times and you're home. We've got a replica pair of the iconic ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz right here in the studio, how they are a part of an awesome show happening at a local middle school. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> One of my favorites. Give me back my slippers. I'm the only one that knows how to use them. They're no use to you. Give them back to me. Give them back. Keep tight inside of them. Their magic must be very powerful, or she wouldn't want them so badly. You s Oh, yes. It is one of the most iconic and beloved movies of all time. I would argue the most beloved movie of all time. Listen to this. The Wizard of Oz celebrates its 80th anniversary this year. Well, a, blue, a, middle, a middle school in Bloomington is paying tribute to this iconic movie with a production of The Wizard of Oz opening, opening next week. They also have some incredible memorabilia from the movie, including a, repl a replica of those ruby slivers. slippers. Why can't I talk today? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just excited about the slippers. Give it up for director Kevin and the kids from the cast of The Wizard of Oz. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Jason. Well, Forget us, uh, it, it, the stars are the kids, and let's get to the ruby slippers right now. Absolutely. What? Now, explain, we say replica, I know what that means, but what does it mean in, in terms of the, these, this pair right here? So this pair is generously on loan to us from the Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And they've been on display in that museum ever since the originals were stolen back in 2005. Yeah. And so, oh, these are absolutely gorgeous. So this is almost, They're an exact replica of the movie. This is even like the bow part. Right down to the bow, right down to every little spangle. And actually. when you're watching the movie, these are called spangles? They're called sequins, actually. Sequins, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When you're looking at the movie, you wouldn't know. I thought they were sequins. I'm like, spangles, what is that? Yeah. The detail is just amazing. She had little feet. She did, absolutely. Yeah, little bitty feet. Now you do, uh, there's other memorabilia too that you guys have, is that right? Yes, the uh, museum also loaned us some autographed uh, pictures. You're looking at oh, some stuff so, right here, So yeah. this is the uh, replica Tin Man's mask that uh, was actually, it's a bit of a mystery. It was found in our school d uh, over a decade ago. There had been a production and it was, someone brought it in and then it was found, actually, if you can believe this, it was found in the refuse. Seriously? Yes, our old customer, Mary Jane Harmon, dug it out and rescued it. She donated it to the museum. Here we're looking at a picture. This is the original cast of The Wizard of Oz. These are all original munchkins. That is an autographed picture signed by Jerry Marin, who just passed away just, this yeah. last year. Yes, and that's the beloved Margaret Pellegrini. She always signs it. Love, munchkin love. Unbelievable. Now you, I let me brag on you a little bit. I'm going to step away. You design, audience. Kevin designs and creates all of these costumes. Talk about, yeah. talk about the process. How long? I'm in awe of your talent. How Thank long you. does this take? So I started last June, and I started. Oh, seriously? <laughs> it's been about yeah. It's been about nine months. Yeah. I started. Yep. And I started um, with the Ozians. Those are the citizens of the Emerald City. Hello, Ozians. So for example, Sophia. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Owen behind her, and we have Scarlett behind her, and we also have Maddie, and we have Carly. So they are they are our Aussians. Or do you use the movie as a reference point, or you try to get it as close as you can? Actually, I use several different things. I went back to the original books. I read some of the books. I saw some of the most recent movies that are out. Um, there's been some television shows as well, and of course, I took some inspiration from Wicked. Oh, absolutely. So it's yep. kind of a blend. I love that. It's, it's a blended it's, yep. mythology. Right. I did some very traditional character looks like Dorothy, Hi, Dorothy. And the Lion, the Tin Man. How delightful and the is Dorothy? Look at then, Dorothy's <laughs> like, I feel like Judy Garland standing right here. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. And then you are for, delightful. Uh, for our Wicked Witch here, I hand designed her entire garment. If you want to turn a little bit, I, the bodice is completely created and it's all sewn and it's done by hand. And there are 64 rows of ruffles on her 64. shirt. 64. 64 rows. Yeah. That okay. That was that took a couple minutes. Now uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, and in the back, if can we have the flying monkey step forward? Or, oh, he's or no, a the winky guard, guard. No, no, the monkey guard. Come on, not the <laughs> flying the monkey. Guard. I apologize. Right. I I look at this audience. That is. Oh. 
That's pretty close to right. the movie, Kevin, right? And this was, this was done by one of our parent volunteers, Brad Livingston, uh, did these, uh, this costume here and did an amazing job. You want to turn to the side and show him the hat and all the little details Ooh, on it. So crazy. This is great. Can you design our um, Halloween show this year, please, Absolutely. Kevin? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It would be my when pleasure. Can <laughs> step back out. When, yeah. when can people come see the show? So the show premieres. We have a senior show this coming Wednesday, March 13th in the morning for seniors and veterans at 10 a.m. Um, and then the show premieres, it opens Thursday night, March 14th at 7 p.m., Friday the 15th at 7 p.m., and Saturday we have two shows, matinee at 3 p.m. and a 7 p.m. show. And you were here a couple years ago, I don't know if we have, I think we have video or pictures for Hairspray. Yes. You did Hairspray yes, as we well. Did hairspray. Yeah, yeah. That was really fun. Look at this, everybody. This. Look at the costumes! I love the costumes on this so oh much. So, that was Sophia. That was you? <laughs> that was Dorothy, everybody. That was Sophia. Look at So we had the that. big foam wigs for that, yeah. Wow. Well, that is just fantastic. Well, I, I hope everybody go see it. Go support local theater. Go support these kids and support our good Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And okay. come and see the Ruby Slippers. Uh, come see the Ruby yes, Slippers. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin, give it up for Kevin and all the kids from the Old Grove Middle School. Thank you. Break a leg, everybody. Now, if you want to see, like we said, if you want to see The Wizard of Oz, check out the memorabilia. The show, as Kevin said, is happening next Thursday through Saturday, March 14th through the 16th at Oak Grove Middle School in Bloomington. Tickets, it's a bargain, just $7, everybody. We're going to take a break. Go support them. We'll be right back after this. Thank you. Kendall's back. Uh, have you, uh, when I see the kids, I, I am reminded, I should have shown the picture. Were you ever in any productions? You're, you're an opera singer. Yeah, I know. So I was in all the things. What was your, did, were you ever in a production of The Wizard of Oz? I wasn't, no, but I love it. And this has like been so fun just seeing all the costumes in the audience today. It's awesome. Yeah, I was in third grade. Oh. I, my, this is the, the, the sign of a good teacher. My teacher, Mrs. Freeze, who I've mentioned on the show many times, realized that I wasn't like the other boys. I wasn't really in recess. I wasn't going out and playing football with the, with the boys. Mm -hmm. So she developed like a little uh, drama program to, to give me an outlet, to give me a creative outlet. For so you? For, yeah, so she, she, we did The Wizard of Oz in front of the school. And I was the scarecrow, but on the day of the production, none of the other uh, deadbeats learned their lines. And uh, <laughs> so there is, a, there is a picture of me. My mother cracked up because in the middle of the show, I realized that none of the kids had memorized their lines. So I went systematically and grabbed everybody's script and did the whole show by myself. <laughs> Why am I not surprised at all? <laughs> I got it. My mom says I even I got on the ground. I did Toto. I was like everybody. That's Toto right. Didn't memorize his lines. The Toto. Toto was a human. I'm like you didn't have any lines and you're still not doing anything. You screwed but, out the way. Yeah, it was it was great. So that that picture you can see it on my Facebook if you're a Facebook friend of mine. And Mrs. Freeze, who's still a friend to this day, she watches our show every day on mm -hmm. YouTube. I love you, Mrs. Freeze. She literally, yeah. I love. I. I love a good teacher, and that, that woman, I've said it many times, and I'll, I, I can't say it enough, that woman single-handedly changed the trajectory of my life. Had I not oh, had her in third grade as a teacher, my life would be totally different, and I love her for that. Now, before we go uh, today, James Corden had Samuel L. Jackson on his show last night. Sam is part of the next season of Corden's Carpool Karaoke, the show on Apple TV. They shared part of Samuel's ride with his co-star from Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, which included some Ariana Grande latte and a lie detector test. Look at this. My wrist, stop watching. My neck is fussy. My big deposits, my gloss is popping. You like my hair? She thinks just bought it. I said, I like it, I want it, I got it. All right, here we go. Would you be honest with me if you didn't like my performance in a scene? No. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Nope. Really? True. Do you actually like my Kango hats? Yes. That's a lie. That's not a lie. That is not a lie. Think I have a strong singing voice? I do. Me. Yes, you. Not true. That's not true. I knew that. I knew that. Fantastic. <laughs> 
Captain Marvel, by the way, opens on Friday. I think I saved the best thing to last. If you guys have been watching the show uh, for the whole hour, you remember we had Dax Holt on. And I made a joke that Dax Holt wasn't wearing pants during the during his his, uh -oh. his thing. And, he, and I go, oh, Dax Holt, I hope you're wearing pants. And he starts laughing. Guess what, everybody? The, <laughs> the, the joke turned out to be reality. Dax's wife texted me about five minutes ago <laughs> Dax wasn't wearing pants, everybody. <laughs> he wasn't, there it is. He gave me permission. He really wasn't. He was standing there in his underwear. <laughs> there we go. I love you, Dax. Tomorrow on the show, I can't wait. I'm cha chatting with my friend, Paige Davis, about the new season of Trading Spaces. That's going to do it. Go out there and be yourself, everybody, because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Oh, Dax.